Today I'm going to show you how to make a classic Danish Christmas dinner. Did I mention the pork roast has a crispy crackling? Hi, I'm Sune and I'm a food geek. Today I'm going to show you how to make my version of the Christmas dinner that we eat in Denmark on the 24th of December. Around the year 300, the Christian church decided that Jesus was born on the 25th of December. But in the Nordic countries, we celebrate Christmas on the 24th of December. Why is that? Well, before the mechanical clock was invented, the new day would start at sundown. And I checked this year's calendar, and in Tostal, where I live, the sun goes down at 3.42 p.m. on Christmas Eve. The Christmas dinner we eat in Denmark goes back around 150 years to the mid-1800s. Before this time, people didn't commonly have stoves in their homes, so instead the Christmas dinner was fish. Which, for some reason, is still a thing in Sweden. The meat was pork, duck or goose. These days most people eat pork or duck, and I'll show you how to make the pork roast with crispy crackling. The sides are boiled white potatoes, caramelized potatoes, pickled red cabbage, and tons of gravy. There are certain regional variations. Those are mainly in the side dishes, though. In the southern Jutland, they eat kale stewed in cream. In some places, they eat medistapulse, which is a spiced pork sausage. And one of the latest additions to the Christmas dinner from the 80s is to serve potato chips on the side, which are used to scoop up leftover gravy. Not in my family, though. <laughs> if you're new to this channel, I bake a lot of sourdough bread and I make delicious food from all over the world. If you want to see more of this content, please join me by subscribing and ringing the bell so you won't miss any future videos. The cut used for the fleskestai is basically the whole top back of the pig. The neck area is used, which is also known as the shoulder. The top part of the loin, which translated from Danish, is called the comb. And my personal favorite, the top part of the ham. All of the cuts will need to have the skin attached to make this roast. So I'll show you how to make pickled red cabbage, caramelized potatoes, and the pork roast. I assume that you can boil potatoes and make a gravy. For dessert, we eat rice pudding with almonds and cherry sauce. I posted a video for this a couple of weeks ago. The link is in the description. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider becoming a member at Patreon. You can also buy some merch or use the links in the description for tools and ingredients. Those were the words, these are the recipe. First, we're going to make the pickled red cabbage. You can do this days or weeks ahead of time. Slice a whole head of red cabbage thinly. This is most easily done on a mandolin. Make sure you take out the larger parts, or you can go over them with a knife afterwards. Melt about 30 grams, two tablespoons of butter in a pot. Add one cubed apple and all of the sliced red cabbage. Put a lid on and let the cabbage wilt.
Then add one deciliter or one half cup of white vinegar. Add one deciliter or one half cup of red juice. I used black currant undiluted. This is a one to five juice. It gives a great complex taste, but the more traditional juice to use is red currant. Let it simmer for at least half an hour. Then taste the red cabbage and season it with salt, pepper and more vinegar if needed. Pour it into a scalded jar and let it cool a bit before putting it in the fridge until you need it. Then it's time to make the pork roast. Heat your oven to 200 degrees Celsius, 400 degrees Fahrenheit, with a wire rack in the middle. This is a loin roast. Start by drying it thoroughly. As you can see, mine is already scored from the butchers. Yours probably won't be, but ask your butcher if he can do it for you. No matter what, go over every score and make sure it's scored all the way down to the meat, but not cut into the meat. If you cut into the meat, it'll make the juices penetrate the skin and you will have a hard time getting a crispy crackling. Then massage the skin with a good amount of salt. Then go through every score and put salt in. I know it's a bit finicky, but this will set you up for a crispy success. Then season with some pepper and put some dried laurel leaves into some of the scores. If you can get fresh laurels, that's even better, but I've never seen them at Christmas time in Denmark. Then put a pan of water at the bottom of the oven. This is to catch the precious juices that you'll use for your gravy. Then add the roast to the rack. Put small balls of aluminum foil underneath to level the top. This will make sure that all of the top is evenly crispy. Then roast for one hour per kilogram of roast, around half an hour per pound of meat. Then we're going to make caramelized potatoes. You can make them as the roast is finishing and just keep them on the stove with low heat, or they can easily be reheated in the microwave if you make them earlier in the day. To make these, you need 500 grams, about 18 ounces of small boiled potatoes. They need to be completely cooled down and dried off thoroughly before using. Pour 80 grams, about one cup of white sugar into a cold pan. Turn it up to about medium heat and let the sugar melt. It 
takes about five minutes to get it all done. Once a good part is melted, you can start stirring gently to get the rest to melt. Once it's melted, add 80 grams, about six tablespoons of butter. I may have been a bit impatient here, but we'll get it to melt. Add the potatoes. And flip them over once in a while to get the caramel all over the potatoes. That's it. Keep them warm on the stove or put them away, whatever suits your schedule. When there's about half an hour left on the roast, you should check the crackling. It's probably crispy in many places, but not everywhere. Grab the pan with the juices so you can use it for the gravy. Crank the oven to 225 degrees Celsius, 450 degrees Fahrenheit, and put a wooden utensil in the door to keep it open just a bit. When the roast is done, it should have an internal temperature of 62 degrees Celsius, about 144 degrees Fahrenheit. If the temperature has been reached but the crackling still isn't crispy, use your oven's broiler, but be careful, it'll burn quickly. Grab the roast out of the oven and let it rest for 20 to 30 minutes uncovered. This will finish cooking the roast. It's time to put the finishing touches on everything. Boil some potatoes, heat the red cabbage, season the gravy. A dash of red currant gel is commonly used in a Danish Christmas gravy. So now it's time to serve your Danish Christmas dinner. Pork roast with crispy crackling, boiled potatoes, caramelized potatoes, pickled red cabbage and gravy. For dessert, riz alamang with almonds and a sweet cherry sauce. While I finish my pre-Christmas celebration, you can entertain yourself with some B-roll.
Oh, my lord. Good thing Christmas is only a week away. This is my absolutely perfect Christmas dinner. I hope you enjoyed it and that you'll try to make it. It's still good if it isn't Christmas. I hope you learned something today. See you next time.